You're listening to EFT Radio Online, where we explore meridian tapping techniques for self-help and peak performance. By listening to this audio, you agree to the disclaimer located at eftradioonline.com forward slash disclaimer. If you'd like to get the schedule of all the upcoming EFT radio shows and access to archive shows, please visit us at eftradioonline.com where you can subscribe to our free newsletter. Are you easily annoyed? Are anger and frustration draining your energy? Are you hanging on to the past? Would it surprise you to learn that these everyday irritations are clues to your biggest problems? Welcome to What's Bugging You? Let's Fix It with EFT with your host, Helen McConnell. Helen is a certified EFT practitioner who has helped more than a thousand people tap away what was bugging them, resulting in weight loss, higher income, stronger relationships, freedom from pain, reduced stress, and more. Join Helen McConnell as she uses the personal, portable, permanent power of EFT tapping to help her guests fix what's bugging them. Hi, everybody. It's your host, Helen McConnell. Welcome to today's episode of What's Bugging You? Let's Fix It with Tapping. I'm really excited to have with me today Steve Wells from Perth, Australia. If you've ever listened to the Tapping World Summit, I'm sure you've heard Steve. He has developed some really great tapping techniques and is so generous with sharing them with the world. I am currently enrolled in one of his courses on provocative energy technique, and I'm delighted to have him with me today. I'll tell you just a bit about him. He's an international leadership coach. He's a psychologist and a peak performance consultant based in Perth, Western Australia. Steve is a leading researcher and pioneer in energy psychology, which is what tapping falls under. He conducted the first scientific study on EFT to be published. And with his business partner, Dr. David Lake, he has co-created Simple Energy Techniques, which is known as SET, Provocative Energy Techniques, PET, and he's also recently discovered Intention-Based Energy Process, IEP. He has helped thousands and thousands of people through his worldwide workshops. You can find out more about Steve at his website, eftdownunder.com. Steve is the author of the best-selling book, 100% Yes, which I highly recommend. And he's the co-author of four other books, including Enjoy Emotional Freedom. He always presents practical techniques you can use immediately to improve your life. I know you're going to enjoy this interview. Oh, I'm so delighted to have you here, Steve. Thanks, Helen. It's great to be here. A few technology <laughs> snafus, but you know, it's pretty amazing. Here you are in Australia and I'm in Portland and we're able to see each other and talk to each other. And oh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's, it's a new world, isn't it? From when we were little, when I, when I was making contact with Frank Farrelly in the US, back when I first uh, came over there to study provocative therapy, it was all snail mail back and forward, you know, and telephone calls that never never kind of seemed to work and broke down and so on. You had to be persistent and patient back in those days. Exactly. Yeah, now we want it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So how long have you been using tapping, Steve? Uh, just about 20 years. So I learned tapping from Gary Craig's video tapes. They were video tapes, not even DVDs. Um, back in 1997, uh, a friend of mine had been over to the US and brought back these videotapes from a conference he'd attended, and he loaned them to me, and I watched them, and I thought, well, this is really weird. <laughs> of course, then I, um, I saw what he was doing with, Vietnam, with uh, war veterans, and I was at the time, I was running groups with, with uh, war veterans uh, for the Vietnam Veterans Counseling Service, and I could see the results. So I thought, well, this looks very interesting, but I don't know if it'll work for me. So I grabbed my wife and said, you know, got any problems you want to try this on? <laughs> Apart from me. And uh, we did a little bit of tapping on her 
needle phobia because she was going to have a blood test the next day and she had this kind of horrible reaction to it. And we just did one round of EFT and it was different. And she came home the next day. I mean, it was funny because I did it with her and she said, you know, it went down from about a five out of 10 to about a two when she thought about it. And I said, let's get it down to a zero. And she says, you're not going to get me to do that stupid looking thing again. <laughs> but the next day when she went and had her um, blood test, there was nothing. And she was able to even watch. She'd never been able to watch before. And she said, it didn't bother me. And she's never had a problem with it since. And um, next day I tried out with a client and she'd had a trauma. Her son was threatening to kill her and um, it was a really awful situation. And uh, he had wiped, the, he cut a cake and wiped the blade off on her arm and just, you know, threatened to kill her. And it was just really horrible the way he was treating her. And she came in shaking and white as a ghost. And I just had a thought, let's just, you know, why don't we just try this new tapping thing? And she says, I'll try anything. And uh, at one point she tapping on one of the points on the finger and it was like I just saw the problem leave the room. It was so fantastic. And uh, I've seen that a lot since, but it's never been quite as dramatic as that first time, you know, when you see this. Whoof, yeah, just this, it just floats away, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And she yeah. said, wow, that one worked, didn't it? And I said, yeah, it looked like it did. I said, how do you feel when you think about what happened the other day? And she's, she's doing what people do when they do tapping, you know. She's searching for a problem and she can't find it. And she says, I don't know, it just doesn't bother me. I said, it doesn't bother you. You were shaking like a leaf. You were white as a ghost, you know. She says, yeah, it just doesn't seem to bother me as much. Anyway, so we did a bit more tapping. She, she said she drove home with a smile on her face. Um, she came back the next week. She was a different person, and so was he. And she had stood up to him, and she said, you're not going to do this to me anymore. And she apologized to him as well. So she had a real balanced perspective. And, wow. you know, this was, this was when I really saw the potential of tapping. So... That's a long answer to your question, but yeah. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a wonderful example of, of how amazing this is and why we get hooked on it right away because we, we see these miracles all the time. Exactly, yeah. So I was very evangelical about it for many years. I still do tend to get a bit like that. It's hard not to, yeah. um, especially when you see people suffering, you know. That's true. I, I, I even um, listen to podcasts or or things like that. And I think, oh, I'm going to write to that person and tell them I can help them with tapping. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's because I see so much potential for it. Yeah. Yeah. I've learned, I've learned a little bit because, you know, I had a bit of a run in with the, the um, acting director of the Vietnam Veterans Counseling Service at that time. And we had to part company because I was using tapping with them and it was a new unproven technique and there really wasn't any research at that time. Right. And so they were really worried about the political consequences of using it with the veterans. The veterans were happy. In fact, um, you know, one of those guys referred several friends to me afterwards and, um, and it was great. I was able to help them. But for a while I was kind of, I was pushed out of that scene because it was just a little bit too new for them. And there really wasn't a proven evidence base like there is now, you know? Right. Well, even now, the VA here in the United States um, is still a little iffy on it, you know, using it on the veterans. Um, well, it's because yeah. there are some, some skeptics, and the skeptics, um, despite the fact that some of them don't even have very much qualifications beyond being a... In fact, they're not skeptics, they're cynics, because a skeptic is someone who needs proof, whereas these people are cynics, and they just want to block everything, and they will even lie to keep it out. So, um, you know, if I'm not we could, saying... If we could just get them to tap, then we, <laughs> we could clear those blocks, you know. Now we have to do a lot of tapping about the fact that there are people who put uh, barriers in the way that won't even look, you know. Galileo mm -hmm. had the proof they just wouldn't look in his telescope, so they put him in prison instead, you know. Right, so, don't, uh, don't even look. We don't even want to look. So, so on that note, do you, have you found it to be effective when we, when we come up against these uh, barriers like that, that if we tap on ourselves and our emotions around it, that oftentimes the barriers break down? Well, it's led me to, yeah, it's led me to see that really, you know, like, for example, tapping is getting out there through the people. It can't be stopped. 
um, even though there are people that will try to stop it because it's so effective. And, um, you know, it's a shame, though, that, that some people have stopped some people from being helped by it. And, it it uh, is a shame, yes. You know, that's, that's a tragedy, really. Mm -hmm. And we have to keep working uh, on that. But we don't have to keep knocking our heads against the brick wall. You know, we've just got to keep going where the energy is good and where the flow is happening and get in alignment with that flow. And so, you know, I've, I've continued to do research and to be involved in that side of things. But I'm also getting it out to people for self-help and training people to use it with others and all that kind of stuff, you know. Absolutely. And I, I just find that when someone else frustrates me or I find myself bumping up against a, a wall that is really a person, that if I tap on my emotions around that and get really um, clear, then oftentimes, like I say, the barrier sort of seems to dissipate or disappear and, and things start to move more, more quickly. And I think we do have that sort of, we, we are all connected. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes, yeah, you, you know, there'll be an opening because um, you're, for example, you know, for me, I was pushy with tapping. So, you know, when you try and push it on people, then they push back. So when you are not so needy for them to have to do it, then <laughs> you can see ways of presenting it to them that are more, uh, you know, that can be more open to it and so on. Plus, you can be patient and you can go, okay, that person's not ready for this yet. I'm going to go give it to this person who is and... You know, I, um, my wife's uncle was very sceptical about tapping and, and I really wanted to give it to him because, you know, I thought it would be very beneficial for him and so on. And it wasn't till you know, I don't know, maybe 15 years. It was only a few years ago that he was, he was actually on a cruise and he got a massive flu and he couldn't get over this flu. And so in desperation, he did some tapping and it just went away completely. Yeah. And um, like within the couple of minutes, five minutes, and he was like, I can't believe this. He says, now I'm a believer. Uh, so, you know, it's been about 15 years that I was working on him to, to take on tapping. Now he, you know, there's nothing beats having the experience, the personal experience of it. And if sometimes people just get desperate enough to try it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, you know, even with, um, because it is still new to a lot of people, you know, we would have people come to our workshops and they would do the workshop and they would see the results and they would even experience them sometimes. And then sometimes they come back two or three or four or even five years later and they say, well, I learned it from you back then, but I'm ready now to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kind of planted a seed and it took a while. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You've got to get your head around it or something like that, you know? Yeah. Your mind, the judging mind has to kind of ultimately settle down. Yes, definitely. Well, the proof is in the pudding, right? I mean, if, if when people do try it, I tell people, you don't even have to believe that it works. Try it anyway. And, yeah. you know, it's not one of those where you have to believe that it works. It does work. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people don't believe that it's going to work. And we, you know, we've had lots of people in our, um, you know, I, I do, I, I teach it to corporate people regularly. And a lot of them, you know, I'll, I'll occasionally have someone who volunteers to prove that it won't work. You know, they come out the front and then they're like, I came out here to prove that it wouldn't work on my problem, but I'm actually feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, I've experienced that myself. So <laughs> speaking of your professional, working with corporations, I know you've been a performance coach for professional athletes and, and professionals in Australia and around the world. How did you get started in that, in that arena? Well, I just decided I wanted to. That's the first step. So for anyone who wants to go into an area, you, you decide that that's what you want to do and then you start, you know, looking for opportunities and putting yourself out there and saying to people that you're either interested in doing this or that you are, are offering it. Mm -hmm. And um, so first of all, I was actually, um, I had a friend who was uh, the coach of the touch rugby teams in this country, so I got to work with them. That was the first real sporting um, uh, teams that I work with and then I was running around doing uh, a different corporate job uh, visiting transport companies meeting with all the depot managers and one of the in the course of the conversation one of these gentlemen mentioned that he was a director for the Perth Heat which is our local professional baseball team and I just said what do you guys do for peak performance and he just, he said I don't think we do enough of that stuff 
And I said, well, this, that's something that I've been really, you know, focusing on for a few years now. And, um, you know, because I've been researching it and all that kind of stuff, but I hadn't really had the opportunity to, to get work with a professional team at that point. And uh, so I went to a meeting. And it was, was quite funny, actually, because uh, <coughs> I sat in that meeting and, uh, you know, the, the, the top managers and the coaches and all that are sitting there. And I said, okay, what's the, what's the challenges you guys are dealing with? And they said, oh, we're, the first thing someone said was, we're chokers. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He, said, he says, we can win all the games in the regular season, but we always choke in the finals. And I said, what do you mean? Turns out for five years in a row, they had been in the finals and choked and not won the championship. Wow. So um, anyway, I heard that term. The third time I heard it, I said, stop, I've diagnosed your problem. And they said, what? Um, and uh, I said, well, you're telling me that you can win all the games in the regular season. You always choke in the finals. Is that right? And they said, yeah. I said, well, if you always choke in the finals, what do you think you're going to do this year? You're going to choke in the finals. So I suggest you stop doing that. You know, I suggest you say we choked last year and we choked the last five years, but this year we've got a new team and this year we're going to win the championship and this year we're going to be the championship team. And one guy, he was the operations manager at the time, became a good friend of mine, became the general manager of the team. He's, he's sitting there and he just turns around and he says, yeah, why don't we do that? <laughs> Much better idea. Anyway, that was actually um, before I was doing tapping. So I was getting into that area before I was doing tapping. But while I was working with them, oh, by the way, history will show that they went on and won the championship that year. And uh, I would say I'm going to take 95% of the credit. I think so, yeah. They had not changed their identity as chokers. They were just going to continue to be that, you know. So, um, you know, I was using a lot of um, NLP techniques and stuff like that and a lot of more conventional techniques. And then when I learned tapping, I was able to incorporate that. And, uh, you know, I, I, um, I got some good results uh, from doing that. I bet they and, kept you on after that, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And, and um, so I worked with them for several years. In fact, I worked with them and then the, the, the entire league in this country uh, fell apart because nobody had any money. So really, we only parted company because um, because uh, they didn't have a team and they didn't have a league anymore, and they went back to a different system. But since then, the league has um, been reinvigorated. I haven't gone back there, but what I have done is gone on to work with other teams and other um, sports and other people. And you know, occasionally I might get a baseball player or whatever. When we come back, Steve is going to share with us ways that we can improve our own personal performance or possibly become a performance coach ourselves. Stay tuned. I'm Helen McConnell, founder of PurposeProsperityHappiness.com. I have a private coaching practice here in Portland, Oregon, where I work with clients from all over the world and from right down the street. I work by video call, by phone, or in person. Tapping doesn't require that I be in the same room with my clients, and I think that's really cool. Have you ever wanted to work with a private coach but felt you couldn't afford it? I'm excited to announce that I'm now offering three new packages for individual coaching with me. Sign up for three months, six months, or one year. My clients who commit to this work get fantastic results that bring positive changes to their relationships, their money, their health, and their well-being. The value of these programs is immense. What a great investment in you. For as little as $500 a month, you can work directly with me every week via video conferencing call. For details, testimonials from my clients, and to register, please go to my website, PurposeProsperityHappiness.com, and click on the Work with Helen tab. Welcome back to the show and my guest, Steve Wells. Steve is going to now talk to us about personal performance, how you can improve your own in any area of your life, or perhaps you'd like to become a personal performance coach. He's going to give us some insights about that as well. And so for my listeners, is there a simple or a strategy that they could use taking that information and tapping that they could begin to use for themselves? 
because not all of my listeners are professional. None of them are probably professional athletes. Oh, no. Well, you mean that they can use for themselves on their performance or if they want to work in the performance area or, or uh, both? I was thinking for their own personal performance. But, yes, if they want to work in the performance area, it kind of falls into that same thing. Okay, how, do, so how do they get better performance? First of all, you set your intention. And the minute you set your intention, you'll find that there'll be some barriers that you have to overcome. Um, and every athlete, everyone in any area of performance knows that there's some areas of their game or some areas of their performance that are problems. So I always like to start working on those and just apply tapping to those, whatever those blocks and barriers are. And then after we get some leverage on that, then I'll say, where do you want to go ultimately? And then we'll apply tapping to the blocks in their mind and body and emotions to being able to achieve their ultimate goals in their sport or in their business or whatever it is. Um, you know, so that's the kind of stuff I like to work on. Uh, you know, we might start, like, for example, you know, when I was working with baseball and I met this guy and he had a problem with pitching to certain players because he would kind of go into a really disempowered state when they came out because they could really hit him out of the park potentially. Um, and back then in our league, we had uh, aluminium bats and... Um, you know, just with an aluminium bat, you could just have a lucky hit and you could hit it out of the park, you know, as opposed right. to a wooden bat where it requires a bit more skill. So um, so we did tapping on, on those things and then he was able to go out and no matter what kind of bat they were or who they were, he could pitch at his best, you know. Wow. And um, so after that, he was interested to do more and I, and I said, yeah, okay, so now we fix those things up. Where do you want to go ultimately? What's your ultimate goal with this, you know? And then we started to work on that. And, uh, you know, he ended up um, going from here. He ended up getting the most valuable player for the league. He got the Pitcher of the Year award. You know, he went over to the U.S. He got signed into a professional organization um, at uh, AA level. Um, got the Pitcher of the, uh, the Best Earned Run Average there. Got signed up at AAA. Got the Best Earned Run Average there. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's basically been in ba baseball for the rest of his life. That's, that's excellent. I, I do hear stories that um, there are Olympic athletes using tapping, and I know there are lots of professional athletes using tapping. We just don't see it on television or, you know, I don't know why, but it seems to be sort of well, still yeah. in the closet. Yeah, there are, there are a few people that have collected, you know, some high-profile people that have been willing to acknowledge that they tap and admit that they, that they do tapping and stuff like that. But not everybody wants to do that and, and so on and they don't want to, you know, it's like any treatment. You don't, some people don't even want to admit that they're getting help. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially not this so, weird looking well, stuff. Yeah. But the, the thing about it is, you know, the elite athletes, they get, people have this idea about that as, it, as it's so different to whatever their own issue is. But uh, all the ones that I've worked with is just, normal people, normal problems. And, and once you finish working on, you know, once you, you finish, well, you don't ever finish working on the performance issues because it's ongoing, but, but once you get some leverage on that, then you start working on the issues in their lives and they're all the same issues that everybody has, you know? That is so true, isn't it? Everyone has the same emotional issues. Too right. Yeah. And uh, we might not have the same content occurring in our lives, but our core experiencing is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, I've been following you for several years, not in a stalkerish kind of way, but, you know, on the <laughs> Tapping World Summit and stuff. And, and one of the things that's always impressed me is that you seem to be an outside-the-box kind of practitioner. You don't do it the necessarily the traditional EFT way, but more tapping and, and the provocative EFT. And, and mm. I've always really admired that. And I'd, I'd just like to hear your thoughts and opinions about why tapping works so well and why you feel it works even outside the traditional protocol? Okay, well, um, there's a lot of people who are, I, I think, you know, they, they do what I would call vanilla EFT, and the good thing about it is that you can do vanilla EFT and you can get results. And you can do TFT, which is thought field therapy, mm -hmm. which is the version of tapping that, you know, Gary Craig um, created EFT from, and there's plenty of people doing TFT and they're getting great results. And the results are actually identical. So, um, you know, we do our version of tapping. We call SET simple energy techniques. 
and it doesn't have setup statements like the FT does, and uh, you know, it uses more continual tapping, and uh, we don't have to create reminder phrases for, for every tapping point. We just basically get people to tap. Why does it work? Because tapping is the common thread, you know? <laughs> yeah. Tapping is the one thing which is common for all these techniques. So, the, the, you know, this is why everybody can create a version of tapping that has their own unique application and they, and they can get results because when you stimulate acupressure points on the body, whether you put, uh, you know, whether you just hold them or put pressure on them, whether you put needles in them, whether you burn herbs on them, whether you tap on them, you're going to stimulate the body's energy flow and you're going to have an influence on emotions. And if you tune into emotional stuff while you're doing that, things are going to start to shift and move. So that's going to happen no matter what. And then it doesn't matter whether you make incantations associated with that or whether you have people, you know, humming or counting or, you know, rolling their eyes or whatever. They're going to get results, you know? Right. So I think the common thread is the tapping and tapping gets results uh, in general. Um, and we tested, you know, whether some of the things in EFT were necessary and we just found that they weren't. And um, so we just think this is more efficient, that's all. Okay. I like that. I mean, I oftentimes, I do a lot of group tapping. I, I teach classes and stuff. And a lot of times we skip the, the setup statement. It just doesn't seem necessary. If you're already triggered, why do the setup statement? And, and sometimes you don't even need a full round. You can see somebody getting a a reaction or a response and you can stop and go, okay, what's going on rather than waiting till the whole round is done and they forget what's going on. Exactly. You know, so there's, there's also, so, you know, there's a lot of things that we've developed that are unique and we created a different name for this because I had a conversation with Gary Craig and we agreed that what we were doing was, was uh, significantly different from EFT, right. but there's a lot of people who do it exactly the way we do it and they just call it EFT, you know? Um, and this is, I suppose, you know, this is some of the confusion in the tapping world. EFT is a little bit like Kleenex. It's the name for all of the tapping <laughs> approaches. Right. And we can teach people a workshop in, in SET and they'll, they'll send us a feedback and say, that EFT you taught me really works, you know. And, <laughs> and we never taught them Gary Craig's EFT at all. Um, we taught them SET, right. you know. And even Gary Craig has changed his protocol over the years. I mean, now he teaches a class where you don't even tap. You just imagine yourself tapping. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I think that's a little different to his original EFT, which is a tapping uh, process. Um, but fair enough. It's, he created the name Emotional Freedom Techniques, so he can, he can call it what he wants, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. But, yeah, we, we originally, you know, I, I say we flunked obedience. We couldn't stick to the script. Uh, <laughs> I think that's probably why I've admired this outside-the-box stuff because I'm totally outside-the-box. I mean, I don't well, follow any traditional protocol. Well, the, the protocol you want to follow is results, you know, what, what absolutely. works. Absolutely, what you know, works. When, when you're with someone, you want to be able to follow where the energy and where the emotion is and where the blocks are, and you want to, you know, I, I said... Frank Farley, who taught me provocative therapy, says, someone said, what's your aim? And he said, I want to get to the area of greatest hurt as quickly as possible and release it. Yep. And that's what I want to do. And so, um, you know, anything that gets in the way of that or anything that might, I like simple things too. If, it, if it's going to complicate matters, I'm, I'm not that interested, you know. <laughs> I'm with you. Keep it simple, make it efficient, yeah, quicker and faster and better and deeper. Yeah, and without some of that stuff, uh, there are less barriers for the regular person. So part of my aim is to get this out to the regular person on the street, some of whom will never go to a therapist, will never go to a workshop, you know, et cetera. That's why I love working with people at work because they're pleasantly surprised that they can get something they can actually use in a, in a work training program or, or a, a personal development program that the, that the, um, the leaders of the company organise, you know. Yeah, and they can use it in every area of their life outside of work, yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. excellent. Well, we just have a few more minutes, Steve, so I, I'm kind of debating what to ask you about, but I, I'm interested in finding out about a little bit more about um, uh, your journey to the Philippines a few years ago. Um, a friend of mine, Jean Montrestelli, went on that trip with you, and I just recently found out that you were on that trip as well. A group of tapping people went to the Philippines to help the uh, survivors of that super typhoon 
um, yep. with their trauma. And I yep. just wanted to, can you tell us a little bit about what you all did there and how people responded? I'm so curious about this. I think it's so important. Well, yeah, it was an absolutely fantastic thing. It was actually um, uh, uh, an idea of uh, Sebastian van der Stree. Mm -hmm. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I've known him for years. It's uh, pretty he's close. A lovely guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from the, originally from the Netherlands, who's living up in Thailand um, and had lived in the Philippines, and he um, created this thing. We called it. He called it empowering the Philippines. And uh, he just made contact with a bunch of us tapping practitioners from all over the world and, um, and said, hey, I've got this idea to go and help people here and I've got some contacts and how about it? And we said, yeah. So we bit, did some fundraising and we went there and um, I wasn't actually with Gene. I saw Gene as he, uh, we, we were there in the first half and then he came in the second half. So we kind of said hello and goodbye at the airport, you know, mm. but um, it was uh, it was a great project to be part of, and and uh, together we um, we ultimately trained over a thousand of their people to take tapping back to help the people in their villages. So we went to some of the places which were the worst hit by the um, super typhoon, um, where um, you know lots of people had died, um, lots of people had suffered. The, you know the whole place was a complete mess. You've never seen anything like it. Um, and these people are often living, you know, a lot of them don't have palatial um, houses anyway. They live in a couple of pieces of wood stuck together and then that just gets blown away and it doesn't leave you with very much. Right. And so it's very subsistence uh, lifestyle. And so it was a great, great thing to be able to help them. And what we found was, you know, because there was a language barrier, we did have translators. You know, we had people who volunteered to translate for the group groups and stuff like that. And it was quite funny. You know, you'd be, you'd be presenting, in, you might be presenting in an open area or you'd be presenting in a building which doesn't have any, um, well, it has windows but no glass or anything like that. And you might have, like, you know, one of these places, um, the upstairs had the roof had blown off and stuff like this. And um, it was stiflingly hot and humid and you'd have a, a whole bunch of uh, villagers in the room and uh, you'd have all kids looking in the windows and people all around poking their head in and it was really quite something. And um, we just taught them the simple tapping and mostly the, the fact that they could do tapping without words and without having to have words and they could, they could either focus in specifically on things that they were upset about or they could just do the tapping when they were upset and that would change the way they felt. And so it was really good, you know, in a way that we had developed SET because that kind of became the main type of tapping that we did because it doesn't require lots of language. Right, you know? which is really important when there are many languages being spoken and no translators, right? Well, yeah, but mostly we had translators and that was, that was good, but, but we just really cut down the language component um, which, you know, with SET, you don't have to have language anyway. You can just focus on whatever you're aware of and tap. And uh, whether it's thoughts or feelings or, you know, body sensations or emotions or whatever, or images. And, uh, yeah, it was really a great thing to be involved in. And we saw some fantastic transformations. And, uh, you know, the, the consequences of that positively should be still being felt because those people went back to their villages to take this, to spread it around, you know? Um, I think it's such an important thing. I'd love to, you know, I'd love to see this, uh, like an, a team available or teams available to, to um, head to these areas after a disaster, natural disaster or man-made disaster, because I, I think the cleanup or the, the rebuilding afterwards is so much more uh, efficient or effective when people aren't in trauma. You know, they're oh, not yeah. walking around well, in a daze. And there's so much of it in this world at the moment. I mean, there are people doing so the, the Tapping Solution Foundation have been doing a massive amount of that work. In fact, they um, did contribute $5,000 towards the trip that we did, you know, so that was really helpful. Yeah. Um, and Laurie Loden and, um, you know, the people who are involved in that, they are getting a lot of stuff done. But, you know, there's also people like... Um, Rahana Webster, who's running around teaching people her trauma buster technique, and she, she actually is going into the Middle East and places like that 
and in Pakistan and working with people in refuges and all that kind of stuff. She's she's an incredible woman, you know, really. And a lot of this stuff she's just funding herself to go and do and, and she's taken uh, a few people with her. Um, but, yeah, it's it's um, there's a big need out there. And, uh, um, you know, we were fortunate, though, because th- in some places there are there's lots of red tape before you can get through to do this stuff. Right. Um, you know, because Sebastian had uh, good contacts in the Philippines, uh, we were able to get out there and actually help them without having as much of that to go through. Right. That's fantastic. I've heard so many great stories and seen so many videos of, of this um, in Rwanda and in uh, Sandy Hook and Boston and, you know, where we've had disasters and these groups have gone to help with tapping and what amazing results they get. It's such a beautiful thing to see the light coming back into people and the life coming back into people and having them smiling and, you know, and uh, because, uh, you know, that kind of trauma can really stay with you in your body and um, and especially the children. And because, the you know, like they have so many typhoons over in the Philippines that they just, the kids would just go out and play, you know, but this was something different. You know, this is the biggest typhoon to ever hit land. You're talking 300 kilometer an hour winds and wow. the the, um, the storm surge, which they didn't understand what a storm surge was. And if someone had told them that that meant it was going to be a massive great tsunami that was just going to wash over and, you know, they, they might have been better prepared. So there's a lot of um, sad things that happened there. Um, but it was really great to see people who've come through that start to get back to they can live and they can tell the difference between a bit of wind and a, and a typhoon and all that kind of stuff, and they could feel okay to go out, and yeah. Yeah, I heard great stories about uh, families, for example, where one parent had been killed in the typhoon, and the other parent was still in a traumatic daze, and so these children are basically parentless until until the the adults and the kids receive tapping, and then the the father, for example, could then attend to his surviving children in a way that's helpful, and so oh, yeah. they don't continue. It's just beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Steve, this has been so great to talk with you. I'm sure I could sit here and talk with you for a long, long time. And I just realized that in my introduction, I forgot to um, mention your contact information. So I'm going to let you do that, and I'll I'll add it back in. But can you tell people how to reach you? Well, yeah. Um, so mainly through, uh, you know, for tapping stuff through eftdownunder.com. So, um, you know, we set that website up. It's a resource site. It has a lot of stuff about EFT because we started in the EFT world and then we've just progressively added our version of this stuff to it. So it's eftdownunder.com. Um, I want to put a plug, if I can, for my book, 100% Yes. Absolutely. Um, it's a great book. And, I have uh, it. I don't know if um, if your people know that I have a, a deal out. If they buy a copy of it and they send me their receipt, I can send them some bonuses that I send out to people who bought the book. So I've got some audio programs where I've worked people through the process. Um, and also um, our new energy therapies manual, we give people that for free if they buy the new book. So um, it's well worth uh, just sending an email or contacting us via the website, eftdownunder.com. And that's 100% yes. You can get it on Amazon. Yep. And, and through it's really the website. about uh, getting the blocks and barriers out of the way for you to be able to live the life that you want to live and achieve your own version of success. Oh, that's excellent. Great. Well, uh, it's just been a delight, and um, it's been wonderful talking to you. And I'm taking a class from Steve, so, you know, full disclosure, um, he's just so great to work with, and I know I'm going to change my style and get a lot of stuff out of work, taking this um, provocative energy technique class. Thank you. Well, we're at early days, so hopefully by the end of it, you'll you'll be able to sing the praises. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Okay. Well, have a what is it? It's morning there, isn't it in Australia? It is morning. Yeah, it's mid morning. I'm going to go and have my morning coffee after this. So. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. Thank, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Yes. See you. What's bugging you? If you'd like to be a participant on the show, please go to Helen's website, PurposeProsperityHappiness.com and click on the What's Bugging You tab. Then click on I Want to Be a Participant. 
While you're on the site, you can view all of Helen's free tapping videos or schedule a complimentary transformation conversation. Again, that's PurposeProsperityHappiness.com. to learn more about Steve Wells and his energy techniques, please go to eftdownunder.com.